Hello everyone, this is Sunny. I'm a Specialist Customer Solutions Manager in Data Analytics. Today we're going to talk about Amazon Redshift built-in feature called Spectrum that enables users to query data directly in their data lake without having to load their data or duplicating their infrastructure. We've seen a proliferation of data and the data sources with IoT devices, smart devices, and social media essentially adding to the streaming data. Um, couple that with you know on-prem or cloud OLTP transactional databases. You've got flat files coming in in different formats, logs, and so on. And then you see more and more often uh, in modern architecture, data lakes are smack in the middle of it all with structured, unstructured data or raw and curated data. And that's why it's very important to start querying data that's sitting in the data lakes. In order to understand how Spectrum helps us integrate the data lake into the data warehouse, we must first understand the overall Redshift architecture. Typically, users interact with the leader node using SQL queries. The leader node uses machine learning to optimize and distribute the workload between the compute nodes and the slices within those nodes, um, which are like virtual compute nodes, uh, giving it a lot of parallel processing capabilities. And Amazon S3 storage is used to load, unload, backup, restore data warehouse uh, data. And then uh, Redshift Spectrum is basically additional managed nodes available to you whether you use them or not. They're included as part of your Redshift cluster when you first spin it up. And these nodes are used to interact with one or many Amazon S3 data lakes, creating what we like to call the data lake house, a lean, massively parallel shared nothing data warehouse capable of querying the data lake. Let's see this in action in a demonstration. For the purpose of this demo, I've set up a data lake with a table called Parquet that's partitioned by product category and Parquet file formats that we will use. Redshift is ANSI SQL compliant and therefore needs to be aware of the schema in order to process queries against the data lake. In order to accomplish this task, I've already created and run a glue crawler which has captured that there are 160 million records in my table and discovered the column names, their types, and even identified the columns are being used for partitioning. Switching over to my SQL client that I've already connected to my Redshift cluster, I'm going to use this simple query to pull in the external schema from the glue crawler table and database. Let's also run a query to see that we are able to see all 160 million records that we saw in the data lake. Let's query the data lake and do some analytics on that data. This query will create a view for us that contains the product aggregate review ratings and average review star rating. Let's use that view to see what products are popular in the home and grocery categories. The San Francisco Bay One Cup seems to be pretty popular, so maybe let's learn more about that. So far we've done some basic querying, but let's use that horsepower of the Redshift processing and do some analytics on the data lake. This query is going to give us the 30 and 90 day average rolling average review rating for the San Francisco Bay One Cup and show us how this product's been trending. Let's combine the warm data lake product data with the customer demographic data from the data warehouse that is more frequently accessed or utilized, which is also why it's referred to as hot data. This query takes the customer demographic information from the data warehouse and combines it with the product data that we saw earlier from the data lake. And it creates a table that also includes the 30 and 90 day rolling rating average analysis. Let's say we speak to some data scientists we work with and they find this data really interesting and ask us to copy it over to their data lake. So their data lake looks pretty empty right now. We're gonna use this unload query to essentially copy that table in Parquet format, partitioned by product category over to their data lake. Um, I'm running the unload command, but um, you can also run a simple SQL query to write or update the data in an external table. 
We hit refresh on the data lake and we can see that the table has been created in Parquet format, partitioned by the product category, ready for the data scientists to run machine learning and other jobs on this data in a completely different data lake. This is how you run a lean data warehouse with the ability to combine with exabyte scale data lakes using Amazon Redshift Spectrum. I hope you learned something today. I highly recommend spinning up a Redshift cluster and playing around with it to learn about Spectrum, RA3, Aqua, and the many features and capabilities of Amazon Redshift. And thank you for your time.